It's Tuesday, August 8. In the headlines, motorists, commuters urged to be responsible on the road. In business news, DBJ raises limit for collateral support to SMEs. Regionally, in Barbados, Afrexim Bank, CARICOM headquarters launched. Internationally, Russia faces a challenge exporting its own grain. And in sports, reggae girls lose to Colombia in the FIFA Women's World Cup. This is the news on PBC Jamaica. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. Motorists are being urged to drive responsibly when using the open corridor along the southern coastal highway. Motorists will be able to use the Harborview to Yalas corridor this week. Communication and Customer Services Manager at the National Works Agency, Stephen Shaw, says the engineers have done their part in working to reduce the risk of accidents. Care for ourselves and care for our neighbors and our neighbors in this instance are all the other persons who happen to use or will be using this particular corridor. From an engineering standpoint we have done certain things. Um, we, we have widened the road, we have um, sought to uh, reduce the numbers of corners. Superintendent in charge of the traffic division in St. Thomas, Winchester Watson, says drivers will be tempted to increase their speed while driving along the highway. And we just want to say for those persons, especially those that are moving passengers from the carpet here to St. Thomas, be extremely careful. We'll be out here daily to monitor you. We want to just implore on you that this it's not a piece of road to just get away with. We have animals on the road, we have pedestrians, school children, we have to look out for them, we have to protect them. We have the motorcyclists, the most vulnerable users of the road. So we want to implore you to just go easy and for most part, it will be a 50 kilo area for most part of this road. Officer McKenzie says while the authorities are responsible for proper signage and effective policing, commuters and motorists must take responsibility as well. Each and every licensed driver, they were taken through the, world, the road code and they ought to understand how and why it is necessary to obey a sign. Yes. Right. So you will not have a police officer or a person at each and every point. We are talking about over 500 points. Mr. Shaw had similar words for commuters who travel with route taxis. We can't be asking the police to secure us when you sit in a taxi or sit in a bus. No decision the driver is not following the rules of the road. And then you say, oh, it's because driving habits and proper safety features. The corridor is part of the Southern Coastal Highway Improvement Project. The project should be completed before the end of the year. As work continues to complete sections of the Harborview to Port Antonio leg of the Southern Coastal Highway, Prime Minister Andrew Holness has urged residents and commuters who have been inconvenienced to be patient. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he stands in acknowledgement and reflection of what Jamaica has achieved in its 61 years of independence. And my thoughts, as always, are about my Jamaican people and what independence means for them. On August the 6th, 1962, when we raised our own flag, bearing the much-loved and celebrated black, green and gold, we heralded in our political independence. Since that time, we have embarked on a journey to become economically independent, with one aim, to raise the standard of living of our Jamaican people and to provide every Jamaican with the opportunity for an improved quality of life. 
standing at a section of the newly constructed Williams Field to Maypen leg of the Southern Coast Highway. Prime Minister Andrew Honus, in his independence speech, said while there have been challenges of stagnation, Jamaica has reported eight consecutive quarters of economic growth since 2016. A historically low unemployment rate, net international reserves of US $4.17 billion as of June 2023, export earnings increased by 55% for the first quarter of the 2023 calendar year in comparison to periods last year. And of great importance is the fact that we have been paying down our debt. Opposition leader Mark Golding in his message says Jamaica can take immense pride in the strides it has made as a nation. From the achievements in arts and the cultural expressions that have shaped our national identity to the advancements in education, healthcare and infrastructure that have improved the lives of countless Jamaicans, we have really come a far way. He says there is still more to overcome, as Jamaica is facing serious challenges such as crime, violence and poverty. There are too many Jamaicans struggling to make ends meet, unable to access quality education and health care and even basic services. Our environment too is under threat and we cannot ignore the urgent need to address the unfolding risks of climate change. We must build resilience and safeguard our environmental assets for future generations. The Nutrition Facts panel on food packages serves as a guide to consumers, providing important information, including information on serving sizes, calories, nutrients, and percent daily value. We caught up with a representative from the Heart Foundation of Jamaica, and she gave us a detailed demonstration. So we're actually showing in different serving sizes of the different food groups so that you know how much of each food group to consume on a daily basis. Of course, for example, this will show you what one serving of fruit looks like and you're to have at least two to three servings per day. So of course, you know, when it comes on to our mango season and we like to sit down and eat our entire bowl of mangoes, we are of course exceeding. And even though we're saying that it's sugars and it's good sugars, it's still in excess of what we should be consuming. So everything in moderation. Um, over here we want to take a look at our labels. Now, one of the things that we don't talk about enough is our nutrition facts panel. So a lot of persons say that they know how to read their labels, but when you exactly look at your labels, one of the first things that you want to look at is how many servings is in a container. And for example, this bottle of soda, when you look at it, it says two servings in the container, which means all of the numbers that are on this, you're going to multiply by two. So let's take a look at the sugars for example. It says that it's 65 grams and when you multiply 65 grams by 2, you're getting 130 grams of sugar. And it takes 4 grams to make up 1 teaspoon of sugar. So therefore when you divide that by 4, you're getting roughly 32 and a half teaspoons of sugar in this one bottle of soda. And right here we're just showing you on average, meaning there can be more, but we just showed you how to read the label how much sugar is in each container that you're consuming. So say for example, this small bottle of juice that we're giving our children to drink maybe three, four times a day, children shouldn't be consuming more than five teaspoons of sugar on a daily basis. And just one box of the juice already has five teaspoons in it. So we have to be careful about what exactly it is that we're consuming. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness, the Heart Foundation of Jamaica, the National Health Fund and Japanet. Time now for the business report with Danita Rodney.
The Development Bank of Jamaica DBJ has raised the limit for collateral support for small and medium-sized enterprises requiring loan guarantees to over $30 million. The limit previously capped at under $30 million is now being offered within the range of $35 to $50 million. The measure took effect on June 1, 2023 and is being done under the bank's partial guarantee program, the Credit Enhancement Facility CEF. This action is said to be a result of the program's highly successful performance during the first six months of 2023. Now for your market updates. In foreign exchange trading for Friday, August 4, the U.S. dollar sold for an average of $155.52. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $116.78. The pound sterling traded for $198.54 and the euro sold for $172.86. In GSE trading, the GSE index declined by over 437 points. The junior market index advanced by over 22 points. The combined market index declined by over 197 points and the All Jamaican Composite Index advanced by over 519 points. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 106 stocks of which 55 advanced, 38 declined and 13 traded firm. Stocks Advance 4, 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited Variable Preference, Barita Investments Limited and Cargo Handlers Limited. Stocks Declined 4, 138 Student Living Jamaica Limited, Access Financial Services Limited and AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited. Trading firm were Berger Paints Jamaica Limited, CAC 2000 Limited and Carreras Limited. The overall volume leaders were JMMB Group Limited 7.35%, Cumulative Redeemable Preference Share with over 4 million units, Stationery and Office Supplies Limited with over 3 million units, and Trans Jamaican Highway Limited with over 2 million units. In regional stocks, on the Trinidad and Tobago Stock Exchange, Calypso Macro Index Fund posted a volume of 1,000 shares. On the Barbados Stock Exchange, Government of Barbados Bond Series I was the volume leader with over 10,000 shares. They were followed by Goddard Enterprises Limited, which traded over 4,000 shares. With major transformation and progress being made in every sector, Guyana has managed to retain a low debt burden. More in this report. With major transformation and progress being made in every sector, Guyana has managed to retain a low debt burden. This was highlighted by Minister within the Ministry of Public Works, Deodat Indar, at a recent event. For nation's sake, right now Guyana, seven cents on every dollar is used to solve its debt. Seven cents. Not like other countries. When we took government in 1992, you had to find $1.53 to serve every $1 of income. It means that you have to borrow to service your debt. So we had that debate. And just for information too, right now our debt burden, which is calculated by your debt over your GDP, that is about 25%. It's the lowest in this hemisphere. So we're not nowhere near any crisis level, as persons would want to put it. We are in a sound place, and uh, the increase in the debt levels is to deal with the very transformative projects that we're speaking about. Minister Indar noted that government has been prudently managing the debt level. In international business, U.S. stocks finish higher, regaining some of the ground lost last week as investors added positions ahead of Thursday's highly awaited inflation report. The Dow gained nearly 1.2 percent, the S&P 500 rose 0.9 percent, and the Nasdaq rose 0.6 percent. Monday's gains came after all three major indexes posted weekly losses as investors worried about rising Treasury yields and mixed corporate earnings. While the majority of companies have beaten Wall Street estimates this earnings season, George Cipollone, portfolio manager at Penn Mutual Asset Management, says the market has seen stock declines from companies that have both missed and beaten estimates. There's a few reasons for that, and I think the market is so hooked on or so convinced that we have reached a trough in margins this quarter 
they don't expect to see much in the way of trouble in the next few quarters. And so I think if we do see some, if we do see any uh, tentative tentative discussion about the economy on earnings calls from, from specific companies, that has tend to lead those stocks to decline, even if they beat. So it's been a really interesting dynamic, a really complex, multi-layered type of quarter where you really have to dig in and read each of these companies to see what is going to drive results going forward. Among Monday's movers, shares of Berkshire Hathaway rose 3.4 percent to a record high after the conglomerate run by billionaire investor Warren Buffett reported over the weekend that quarterly operating profit topped $10 billion for the first time. Shares of Tyson Foods slid 3.8 percent after the meat packer disappointed Wall Street expectations for third quarter revenue. And vaccine makers BioNTech and Moderna slumped 7.5 and 6.5 percent respectively. BioNTech said it was cutting its drug development budget after quarterly revenue was hurt by a drop in demand. Moderna said it was hit by investment bank Leerink cutting its price target for the company. Investors now await the next round of inflation data, as Thursday's Consumer Price Index report is expected to offer more clues about the Federal Reserve's monetary policy path. In market data for oil, oil prices fell by more than 1.5 percent after data showed China's imports and exports fell more than expected in July in yet another sign of a sluggish post-COVID rebound for the world's largest oil importer. Brent crude futures were down $1.33 at $84.01 a barrel, and West Texas Intermediate crude was down $1.23 at $80.71. And that was the Business Report on PBCJ. I'm Denita Rodney. In regional news, in Barbados, Prime Minister Mehmet Lee says the opening of the Afrikzim Bank CARICOM office serves as a bridge to partnership and prosperity. The office is the only one outside of Africa. By 2021, Professor, you came and you met with Minister Strawn and myself and the then governor of the Central Bank and we recognized that this was a journey which was obligatory. That we have made as much progress in as short a period of time as we have in less than two years speaks not just to the passion but as Ralph said just now to also that the numbers and the opportunities can work for both of us. It is historic that the first Afrasian Bank office outside the geographic Africa is here in the CARICOM, only in Barbados. Permit me to congratulate all CARICOM partner states of the bank as well as the government and people of Barbados for this remarkable achievement. There is no doubt that this office will be very busy. A historic cooperation framework agreement has been entered into between Belize and the Republic of Korea. The agreement promotes poverty reduction and sustainable economic trade and investment, as well as social development of Belize through grant aid from the Republic of Korea. Here is what the Prime Minister had to say about it. The Koreans um, presently have the 10th largest economy in the world. And as the president pointed out to me, um, 70 years ago, they did not have enough paper to, for the children to go to school. And they believe that they managed to develop their country because they had many countries assisting them. Now that they're at a point that, um, in, of their development, now they believe that they should be able to help um, all developing countries. They have this special fund, the um, EDCF, the Economic Development Corporation Fund. Um, of which um, developing countries or, or um, can access funding at 0.01 percent to be paid over 30 years, and in many instances, a part of that fund is made of that loan is even a grant. But Belize, unfortunately, we are considered a middle-income country based on GDP, and we have to be making the case that we are not a middle-income country because we 
have whilst it's um, our GDP is fairly high compared to other countries it's only 400,000 of us but we are in a big country so I tell them imagine Barbados in one of our islands Hamburgus Key with 100 miles of paved road you cover the entire country we don't and we need clinics we need bridges we need farm roads we need schools you know we need hospitals so it is very costly for Belize to be able to put the necessary infrastructure that we want to provide for our for our people and the president agreed with Belize with us and so he instructed immediately that they should allow Belize not to have access to to these funds in Guyana vice president dr. Brad Jagdeo says the government is intent on monitoring oil production offshore and verifying what activities the ExxonMobil-led consortium is engaged in. But first, he emphasized that the government wants to ensure core reforms, including legislative changes, they're in place before shifting its focus to monitoring. We will get past the core reforms first, that we were focusing on the core reforms, the PSA, the Petroleum, the Local Content Act, the auction, the, um, the, the Petroleum Activities Bill. When we've, we've upgraded the architecture, we will then move to operational compliance issues. That was Vice President Dr. Bart Jagdio speaking about the government's plans for regulating the nascent oil and gas sector at a recent press conference. Once the government is finished with the core reforms, be it creating new laws or oil contracts, he says focus will be turned to making sure that the oil companies offshore are doing exactly what they say they're doing. Exxon is building an operational center as part of the head office. They have a fiber optic cable coming in. We may have to get an access to the fiber or in the short term we'd probably use satellite um, satellite technology to have our independent measuring of the, the flows and everything else. Discharge, water, oil flows, etc. Every one of those FPSOs. Oil production is currently ongoing in the prolific Stabrook block offshore Guyana. Production is set to increase beyond 1 million barrels per day before the end of this decade. Reporting for the newsroom, Vishani Ragabir. Jamaica's Prime Minister Andrew Honus says his country was the first to offer assistance in this most recent crisis in Haiti. However, the situation has deteriorated and a security force is needed. Haiti. Clearly, Jamaica could not take the lead on this. We don't have the resources. Um, even though we have the support, the ambition, the will, and uh, the, we stand, as always, in solidarity with the people of Haiti. Mr. Holness was speaking at a recent quarterly media briefing at Jamaica House. He says Jamaica continues to advocate on behalf of its Caribbean leader. But we use good offices. We work through CARICOM to ensure that the stakeholders in Haiti continue to speak. We continue to lobby the um, Security Council. And we continue to do our international lobby. And so we are very happy, very happy to see that Kenya is on board. Uh, possibly today, Minister, we'll have a word with the Kenyan president. But I also had long discussions with the Rwandan president, President Kigami. Uh, Kigami. And uh, he has also committed to give support. So it seems that things are coming together. Uh, the UN Secretary General. Uh, has also been doing great work in trying to secure such a force. In international news, Russia's lack of ships and Western grain traders' shrinking appetites for business with Moscow are adding to rising costs of moving Russian wheat as the war in Ukraine spills perilously close to vital Black Sea supply routes. Growing tensions in the Black Sea means Russia is feeling the crunch when it comes to moving its own wheat. The country's lack of ships has added to rising costs, while Western grain traders aren't feeling much appetite to deal with Moscow. All this at a time when the war in Ukraine has come dangerously close to key Black Sea supply routes. 
President Vladimir Putin promised to replace Ukrainian grain with Russian shipments to Africa last month. He did so after Moscow ended an arrangement that gave Ukraine's food cargo safe passage in the Black Sea. Russia's move put a de facto blockade on its neighbour, and Moscow also attacked storage facilities. Since then, both Russia and Ukraine have warned ships destined for each other's ports could be treated as legitimate military targets. Sources said insurance for ships heading to Russia's Black Sea ports currently costs tens of thousands of dollars in additional premiums daily, with rates now ticking even higher. Industry experts say the financial and security risks associated with trading with Russia have driven up costs of freight for Moscow, and that has pushed the country toward older and smaller vessels run by less established shipping operators. Recent industry data hinted at Russia's growing hunt for vessels. Requests for charters doubled to 257 in July compared with the same month last year. The call for ships was up 40% from June and likely to climb further as the export season gathered pace. The Black Sea remains a critical area for Russian exports with other locations more complicated and costly. Russia's agriculture ministry forecast grain exports will fall about 8% during the 2023-24 season but gave no reason for the drop. The ministry in December announced a plan to build a fleet of 61 new grain ships. It did not say when they could be built by Russian shipyards. In sports, Jamaica's historic stint at the Women's World Cup ended Tuesday as Colombia scored the only goal to give it a 1-0 victory over reggae girls. Jamaica almost immediately equalized, but Jody Brown's header was denied by the post. The 25th rank Colombians have now secured their maiden quarterfinal against European champions England. And that's the news on PBCJ. You can follow us on our social media platforms at PBC Jamaica. Thanks for watching.